Dr. Paul Mason, insulin at high levels is the key driver of chronic disease. If we have a look at uh, blood glucose level, the job of insulin is to take sugar out of your circulation, one of the major jobs. And if the insulin's not working properly, your blood sugar level can increase. If we have a look at blood pressure, insulin actually tells the kidney, tells the body to hold on to sodium, which is in table salt. And when your body holds on to too much sodium, it actually draws fluid with it and increases your blood pressure. So again, high blood pressure in most cases is caused by high levels of insulin. If we have a look at the consequences of fatty liver disease, so fatty liver is strongly associated with insulin resistance and high insulin levels. And that leads to high triglyceride levels and lower HDL levels. Um, and of course, being overweight, having what we call central adiposity, where you've got this, you know, basically a, a rotund belly. Well, being overweight, that's an insulin driven condition in a lot of cases. There is a very strong association of having high insulin levels and developing obesity or becoming obese. And in actual fact, it's very, very difficult for the body to store fat if you don't have high insulin levels. People with a type of diabetes where their body can't produce insulin, they actually waste away. They're type 1 diabetics. They, they, their bodies literally waste away. Another type of diabetes, type 2 diabetes, of which there's a worldwide epidemic, that's associated with high levels of insulin and obesity. So metabolic syndrome, while we say, yes, it's these five criteria that we use to diagnose it, in reality, it all comes back down to insulin and insulin resistance. The metabolic syndrome has five criteria. Central adiposity, 35 inches for men, 40 inches for women, that's too high. High blood pressure, if it's 130 over 80, that's too high. High blood glucose, more than 100 is too high. High triglycerides, more than 150 is too high. Low HDL, less than 40 is too low. Insulin resistance basically just means your insulin does not work properly. So your body will compensate by releasing more insulin. So in actual fact, insulin resistance can usually be equated to having high levels of insulin. The organ in the body that secretes insulin is called the pancreas. And if that, for whatever reason, becomes damaged and unable to function, then it can't release as much insulin as it used to, and then your insulin levels will actually fall. And what a lot of people don't realize is that if you have persistently elevated blood sugar levels with diabetes, um, that sugar will actually damage your pancreas. It's through something called glycation. We, it forms advanced glycated end products. That destroys what we call islet cells in the pancreas that release insulin. And then even though your body needs, needs more and more insulin because your insulin's not working, the insulin levels paradoxically fall. And that opens a real can of worms because then your, your blood sugar levels go absolutely crazy. And as you know, high blood sugar levels in your circulation, well, that just damages the blood vessels and it damages whatever organs those blood vessels are going to. You know, it's the most common cause of eye disease. It's the most common cause of going on renal dialysis because of kidney failure. It's the most common cause of body part limb amputation. I mean, this is truly a terrible disease. It will double your risk of having a stroke. It will double your risk of heart disease. Um, you know, there's uh, the, the consequences, the follow-on of this insulin resistance, if it's left unchecked, can be absolutely catastrophic. Blood glucose, also known as blood sugar. The major job of insulin is to take sugar out of your circulation. If insulin is not working, your blood sugar can increase. Blood pressure. Insulin tells the kidney to hold on to sodium. When the kidney holds on to sodium, it draws fluid with it and increases blood pressure. High blood pressure, in most cases, is caused by high insulin. The consequences of fatty liver disease, it's strongly associated with high insulin levels. 
So high triglycerides, low HDL. Overweight, especially central adiposity. Very strong correlation between obesity and becoming obese and high insulin. It's very difficult to store fat if you don't have high insulin. For example, type 1 diabetics don't produce insulin and their bodies literally waste away. Type 2 diabetes, which is a worldwide epidemic, is associated with high insulin and obesity. Metabolic syndrome has five criteria. In reality, it all comes down to having too much insulin or your insulin is not working, so it has to be increased. This is called insulin resistance. The metabolic syndrome has five criteria. Central adiposity, 35 inches for men, 40 inches for women, that's too high. High blood pressure, if it's 130 over 80, that's too high. High blood glucose, more than 100 is too high. High triglycerides, more than 150 is too high. Low HDL, less than 40 is too low. Insulin resistance usually is equated to high levels of insulin. Insulin comes from the pancreas. If the pancreas is damaged, insulin levels will fall. Consistently elevated blood sugar will damage the pancreas. Glycation destroys the pancreas's islet cells. If the pancreas is damaged, insulin levels will fall. Then, when you need insulin the most, insulin levels drop and your blood sugar goes crazy. High blood sugar in circulation damages blood vessels and organs. It is the most common cause of eye disease, renal dialysis caused by kidney failure, amputated limbs. It doubles the risk of stroke. It doubles the risk of heart disease.